Good morning. It's March 25th and you're joining us live at 1030 Eastern Time for Liberty University's Convocation. It's very telling that so many of us woke up this morning, turned on our iPhone or the television to see that Prince Charles, British royalty, a 71-year-old senior citizen, is now infected with the coronavirus. Prince Charles represents over 400,000 people worldwide who have been tested positive with COVID-19. He also represents, in one sense, the 20,000 people who have lost their lives. We're praying for all of these people that have been infected to be able to weather through this virus. But if you think about the reality and frame it around February the 5th, seven weeks ago, when we talked about news coming out of London being Brexit, you realize how in such a short time this thing has taken over the world. On February the 5th, seven weeks ago, Nigel Farage was our convocation guest. Sure, the cover story at that moment in the Telegraph, Britain's Telegraph, wasn't about Prince Charles being positive with COVID-19. The story back then was Brexit. And on that morning, that was what was, everyone's, was on everyone's mind. But at the same time, on that particular morning, on February the 5th, we slowed down in the middle of one of our worship songs, Waymaker, to bring a few of our Chinese students, since we have over 80 that are represented here at Liberty University, to bring a prayer request before the entire student body. We talked about how in one province in China, where it's most infected, that there was a global threat of this, this virus called the coronavirus. And at that moment, we said, look, this might seem like it's something that's pretty far away for us there in the East. But for many of our students, it's a very real local reality for their families. Let's watch this clip about that particular morning. In the last few weeks, uh, we've all come to terms with a word that we know now as the coronavirus. Something that's not new uh, in, in the world, but something that recently has become front page news for us. The coronavirus has um, so far uh, infected over 25,000 people. It's a global threat, but at the same time, uh, nowhere is it more affected than the nation of China, where they've seen almost 500 people lose their lives because of the coronavirus. We have 84 students uh, that are a part of our body here at Liberty who are Chinese students. And uh, the other day I had the privilege of meeting with nine of those students. We got together and we talked about ways that we as a university could serve the people of China that are in the midst of this quarantine, in the midst of all the hardship of this. Their, their entire nation is shutting down. The economy is shutting down. People aren't able to get on the streets. Everything's been completely brought to a halt. And so uh, I met with nine of our students, several of them from the very province where this whole thing started at a food market. Uh, one of them grew up less than two miles away from the very market where all of this is projected to have started. And so we were praying together, strategizing together how we could be an answer to that prayer. And uh, we just felt like it would be amazing if in the middle of Waymaker, in the middle of this moment, we, we understood that God doesn't have to have Chinese translated to him. He's just as Chinese as he is American, as he is Iranian, as he is Portuguese. God is a global God. Amen? And so we wanted to come at this moment and pray for the people of China, pray for the people all around the world that have been uh, just affected by this. This is very personal for some of these students that are going to come on stage. And I asked Maggie if she would. To so Maggie prayed. And we even had one of those choruses of that particular song, Waymaker, sung in Chinese, led by uh, just one of our students who was very much in the thick of all of that. And at that particular moment, we walked off of the convocation stage and later that afternoon even strategized on how we could get masks to that particular province, how we could help the local church there be salt and light. 
Now fast forward seven weeks later, and many of us are quarantined all over the world, and we're certainly not meeting in the Vine Center today. This is why it's so timely that God has given us a convocation guest who's no stranger to Liberty University. Our friend Francis Chan is a best-selling author and a prophetic preacher, and at this moment, he is in Hong Kong. While this virus was going from east to west, Francis and his family felt the call by God to go from the west to the east. And we wanted to sit with him and talk about his three and a half, four week journey already in that part of the world. Let's listen to what Francis had to say. Hey Francis, man, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, of course, this is cool. All the way in Hong Kong. Tell us about this move to Hong Kong, because when you were with us in February, this wasn't on the radar. Yeah, so my wife and I, our whole family went out to uh, uh, Asia in the summer, that yeah. summer right after I was at Liberty, and it was just such an amazing time. Like, we were, you know, going through the slums and, uh, you know, Myanmar and, just sharing the gospel with people who had never heard. And the hunger right. just so blew our minds that on the flight home, I just looked at my wife. I go, what do we do on a normal day? Like, what are we going to do this week? Right? Yeah. And does any of that compare to what we just experienced? And I said, I don't want to live this normal life. Like, mm -hmm. like everyone else, like, like people don't even believe in God. What, what if we, what if we move? Yeah. And my wife, who is amazing, you know, mother of seven, just kind of goes, let's do it. Wow. <laughs> so we just kind of set our mind on that. And since then, God has done so much. And so we moved here to Hong Kong about three and a half weeks ago. Yeah. So, I mean, goodness, three and a half weeks ago. So right after the protest surge yeah. and right yes. as the coronavirus is really taking off in your yeah. part of the world, what's yeah. the mood in Hong Kong right now um, with all this happening? Well, what's crazy is everyone was so concerned about us uh, going over there, over here. And, uh, and what, but we just felt a peace about it. Like, mm -hmm. you know what? Let's, God is calling us there, so whatever happens, happens. Right. We just have to be obedient, and we're excited about it. The kids understood, even though their friends at school were teasing them about getting the virus. Da, 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 da. And uh, what's crazy is we get here, it's like the day we left, it kind of broke out in the U.S. Right. And we get to Hong Kong, and things are pretty calm out here. I mean, everyone walks around with a mask, but and the streets are not as busy. It's probably 50% mm. um, from what I understand. And, but life is pretty normal for us. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of people and businesses are hit real hard, but uh, the believers, um, some are just kind of mm. doing the video thing and just, I don't know, trying to survive Meanwhile, there's another crew that are so fired up and are hitting the streets, knocking on doors, um, going to the poor because people are open right now. So it's really fun to be with that crew. So talk to me about just, I know this is the very genesis stages of your mission and ministry there, but uh, what's your, what's your vision uh, for the kind of work you're going to be doing day to day? Yes. Long term? I, I didn't really have a vision and I'm not sure that I still do. Right. Um, we're just kind of day to day going in ministry, encouraging different ministries, yeah. um, meeting people. I'm we're all learning the language. I mean, I'm I speak it, but it's it's horrible. Uh, so just speaking as much as I can to yeah. just people on the streets, people in taxis, whatever. Um, our initial plan was let's use Hong Kong as a base and go to a lot of these um, more impoverished areas, but. Even as I was coming here, I felt like the Lord wanted me to stay put for a while mm. and dig some roots here in Hong Kong. And now I kind of have no choice anyway, so it's yeah. it's perfect. You know, with the travel bans, um, it's just uh, it's been good. It's been good building relationships. I want deep relationship wherever I am. Yeah, I think it's so great that you're you're not getting in there and just getting going. You're slowing oh, down, yeah. building, like you said, 
relationships with the ministers that are already there. Speaking of, yeah. uh, talk to us about your mom's ministry there. And then uh, I saw that recently you found something out that was just yeah. crazy. So tell us about this. I mean, this is just how God works in my life. And it, it just is so humbling. I mean, this is like daily stuff where, right. you know, two days before we move, okay, I was just interviewed like this. Someone said, what are your fears? And I said, I'm not really afraid of anything except maybe that I'm missing what God wants me to do. Like, I think this is him. I'm pretty sure it's him telling us to move to Hong Kong. But how do you ever know for sure? Yeah. And the very next day, I'm packing up the house and I find these old pictures of my mom, my birth mom, wow. who died while she gave birth to me. So I know so little about her, but these pictures have like, captions and dates on them because they were given to me by someone who knew her, but I never really looked at them. I mean, I right. glanced at them. Oh, that's what she looks like. But then uh, I'm looking at these pictures, you know, and so a friend of mine set up a, an office in Hong Kong for me. And, and I'm looking at the address and I'm looking at these pictures going, wait a second, this is the same neighborhood. And so I sent him to my friend. He goes, no, that's like literally around the corner. And there are pictures of my mom doing ministry in that neighborhood. Like that was her base. Wow. She was a part of Youth for Christ uh, back in 1950. You know, she was a part of the first Baptist church, like their very first service in that neighborhood almost 70 years ago. That's where she ministered. And, and so it just blew my mind. Yeah. Going, God, are you kidding me? My mother ministered here and she probably walked these streets and said, God, I want to have an impact in this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Use me. And for God to have this plan of this 70 year span, yeah. I really believe of him bringing us back here. I'm just going, God, I. I'm so at peace right now. I love you so much. You're always doing this stuff in my life. Thank you. God is yeah. so good, man. He'll give us these confirmations yeah. right when we need them. And then for you to know that you're literally following the footsteps and the legacy of your birth mom in the yeah. same neighborhood, it's just yeah. mind blowing. Praise the Lord, man. Well, I also think like, I, and again, I'm, I'm speculating, but yeah. I'm guessing she walked those streets and prayed. Okay, if she's a part of this ministry, I'm guessing she prayed. Can I have an impact here? And and what I want to say to people is those little prayers, yeah. you know, uh, that the Lord leads you to pray, you have no idea the ramification that has for generations. Yeah, just <laughs> that know? prayer coming into fruition that her yeah. own son would parachute into the same neighborhood years and years and years later. God yeah. is so good. Man, yeah. talk to us about uh, just the, the house church movement. You know, yes. um, I, I love your posture. Even when you were here, you weren't against, you know, churches that are the mega churches that have gatherings that are thousands yeah. of people strong. You just feel like, man, yeah. the kingdom of God is diverse. As long as they love the Lord, they share the gospel, yeah. they're authentic in their faith. Uh, God can have a diversity of expressions, but uh, so, but, but interestingly enough, right now we're having this conversation and no one in America is meeting on a Sunday morning in the large gatherings, yeah. middle-sized gatherings, and yeah. no one is meeting in community groups. A lot of people are spooked to meet because they're being yeah. told like nine or less, or if you have the elderly, don't bring them. And so mm -hmm. those challenges right there uh, really maybe reveal a lot of things about the church and what we yeah, do even between yeah. Sundays, but you've been yeah. living in that space a long time, bro. Talk to us about like this present moment and yeah. the house church movement and the opportunities that are like right here in front of us. Totally, and like you said, I've never been against like the big church. I, I'm speaking at these places all the right, time. So right. I'm not against large gatherings. I've just always questioned the wisdom of that moving forward. Mm. Um, just going, it feels very volatile. It feels like financially, like it costs so much to keep these things going. And, mm. and, and there's so many things that could go wrong to where we won't be able to meet in these big gatherings. I wasn't at all thinking a virus. Right. I mean, that, that's kind of crazy to me. Right. Um, but 
I, I was just addressing how volatile we are when we're supposed to be so resilient. Like we're supposed to be people who you can put me anywhere on the earth, and if I'm the only believer there, I can still thrive. Wow. Because I know the Lord. Even if you take my Bible away, I've got enough in this mind, and, and I love that time alone with God, and I can go and I can make disciples. Like, like I raise my kids to be those types of people, right. and I try to shepherd my people to be those kinds of people. So if something like this happens, and even if the Internet goes down, right. it's okay. Like, I meet with the Creator. This is mm. insane. I, I mean, I can be alone in a room with the king of the universe, right. the one who spoke this whole world into existence. Like, what a rush. And I could find a believer or two and, and, and break bread with them. Like, it's in our DNA spiritually. But this opens your eyes to go, wow, I am so dependent um, for some people. Sure. And yet for others, I think there's this rising up. That's why I love, you know, what you get to do at Liberty is, is raising up this next generation and looking at these young people and go, look, open your eyes. We need to be more resilient than this. Right. We need to be stronger than this. Bigger things, more tragic things are going to happen in your lifetime. And you've got to be prepared for this. Mm. So even while there's even the Internet and we can have these relationships, use it for his glory and get trained up by real people and deep relationship. In this moment, yeah. uh, you yeah. know, what people need more than uh, three Chris Tomlin songs and a sermon, whether yeah. it's on the Internet yeah. or even in the same room, and those are all valuable gifts from God, is if you're elderly, someone who will just go to Costco and stand in line for you for three hours yeah. and make sure yeah. as a part of that community they're thinking about you they're walking into your yeah. life and sitting with you and, and not out of rows i mean out of rows and into circles right having that dis dialogue with you um yeah it, do you think that god could use this moment to really um bring the idea of robust christ-centered communities um more in the oh, forefront yeah, yeah. yeah. i mean I sure hope so. I believe that's what he's doing yeah. is uh, getting people off the benches or, you know, or the pews and yeah. like into the game. Like everyone needs to get involved now. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just, I, I think it's just a very telling time, but it's also just a, a great opportunity. Um, I think the worst thing that could happen is for people to, almost go backwards. Like, okay, maybe you were attending a congregation and now you're attending a congregation online. Um, and the worst thing is for you to get used to that and go, oh, this is even better. Uh, it's even less of a commitment. I can just stare at a screen. I don't even have to get yeah. dressed and drive anywhere. Um, gosh, that's the worst thing that could happen. Right. Verse, because that's the opposite of what Christ wants. Yeah. He wants this intimacy that the world has never seen. He wants a connection right. between you and me. Where, like you're talking about, you can't go to the, the the supermarket. You know, I'm right next door. I got you. Like it's this this like uh, you know. Look, I know you lost your job. Your business is going bad. Mine might survive. Why don't you work with? We'll figure this thing out. But yeah. we're in this thing together. If I starve, you starve. Like it's those types of depth of relationship where we show it by what we do, just like in scripture when it's like, no one claimed this is mine. Um, no yeah. one was hoarding. It was the opposite of that. Yeah, it's an interesting word, hoarding. Uh, I've been, you know, just talking with friends who are going to grocery stores and the shelves are empty in certain cities. Here in Lynchburg, you know, uh, yeah. our, so far at this moment, our grocery stores are, you know, like they're not yeah. empty. Uh, there might be a place or two where you see some emptiness, but like there's still a lot everywhere. Yeah. But um, just as Christians to just not allow yourself to have fear and panic, take mm -hmm. you to a place where you're hoarding and you're thinking about the person who comes after you, who maybe needs yeah. this and, and just trusting that the Lord is the daily bread giver, you know, mm -hmm. and to have that. Talk to us a little yeah. bit about that 
especially as what you've learned in that with being with the ultra yeah. poor, even in, in a place like you, you're living in now? Well, it's, you know, what's embarrassing is when we're getting ready to move here, I gathered the kids together and I just asked them, how are you guys feeling? Mm -hmm. You know, you guys sad, you guys excited, or, you know, you scared. And my kids are, you know, they're like, we're not afraid, you know, yeah. across the board. We're, um, we're sad leaving our friends. Um, we're excited about the mission. You know, each one kind of said similar things. And my five-year-old, I said, what are you feeling? To my five-year-old, and he starts to tear up. And he goes, I'm just so sad that so many people are dying in China mm. right now. And I was like, oh my gosh, we're all talking about how we're feelings and what we're experiencing. Here's my five-year-old son yeah. on the verge of tears because he's thinking about these people dying. He's not, he's not hoarding his feelings, it. yeah. Yeah, I didn't even, that didn't even cross my mind. I, I, that's, that's embarrassing. Like, I'm thinking about my family and us, mm -hmm. and it's so easy to default to self-centeredness. And I, I just remember, you know, I didn't used to be this way. Um, I did think about other. And when I first got saved, it was like, oh, my gosh, my friends, my friends, they're, they're, gonna, they're headed for an eternity apart from God. Like, that's the way I thought. Yeah. And I think even earlier on in my Christian walk, when we started making money and we're giving it away and people were like, well, what if there's an emergency? I'm like, emergency? Did you hear about the tsunami? Did you hear about, you know, this earthquake? Yeah. What, what do you mean emergency? Oh, you mean just for me? Mm -hmm. Like, that's so unbiblical. And so this whole idea of, um, you know, we, we try to make it like a Christian thing. Well, I'm just looking out for my family. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, you're only looking out for your family. Um, and that's not biblical. Uh, like, if you have resources, they're not your own. They're to be shared. And to try to think of that mindset at this time when people are so afraid. Yeah. I mean, what the scripture says, if we seek his kingdom first, that's our only security. You seek his kingdom first and all these things will be added to you. But, but you start seeking your own, own family kingdom, right. first, um, I would just be careful of that. Yeah. Because it's like that rich guy that built bigger barns and stored yeah. it more up. He goes, ah, that's great, but you're going to die tonight. It's like, whoa, I don't want to be that guy. Yeah, man. I mean, as you were just saying that, I was thinking, people are thinking, my kingdom is running out of toilet paper. <laughs> my kingdom yes. is running. Yeah. And they're just yeah. piling up for their kingdom versus... Man, the person who's coming behind me just as much needs this pasta, you know, as somebody else. And uh, yeah. just that kind of selflessness is only the work of the Spirit, you know, yeah. like in and through somebody. Is there one passage of Scripture that God's really put on you um, in this, like in the last three and a half weeks that you've been in Hong yeah. Kong? You know, there's a, there's a song that I've been trying to memorize, so it's on my yeah. mind a lot. And gosh, the older I get, the harder it is to memorize stuff. Um, but it's Psalm 34, and it talks about how I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear and be glad. But there's a, a verse in verse 5 where it says, those who look to him are radiant and their faces will never be ashamed. Yeah. And like, this is our time to like, it's kind of like at the end times when Jesus said, all this craziness is going to happen. And when you see it, lift up your heads for your redemption is near. Yeah. Come it's on. this picture of everyone like, ah, and these, these faces just looking up to heaven going, it's happening it's happening. I'm not. I'm not this doomed to like this is the end of the world. I am saying though, in those times of chaos, it's believers going. I'm not. A, what's the worst thing that could happen? I die. That's right. Like, oh, that's terrible. Yeah. Because for me to live is Christ and to die is Dang. gain. Oh, what a horrible gain! Like, like this is the peace we should have. Yeah. You know, the the only fear is am I going to be faithful during this time? Am I going to trust that as I seek his kingdom first, he's going to provide for me? Am I going to trust that 
not a single bird falls from the sky without his knowing, and he's got me. That, that those are the only things we need to be concerned about right now is our own faith. But, but as we're walking with the Lord, there should be this radiance. Those who look to him are radiant. Man, if you're just as afraid as the guy next door and <laughs> living like that, yeah. man, that's not how our father wants us living. He's, he, this is not, he's not oblivious to this. We were made for this moment. You and I, everyone that's watching who knows Jesus Christ, he created you at this time. Just like that story about my mom, everything was all set up, right. okay? And we were made for this time. And he knew there would be a generation that was already thinking about this resilience and seeing that, man, this last generation had it easy, but the future's not going to be like that. And we're prepared for this. So he made you for this moment. And so lift up your heads, show that radiance and go, man, I was made for this because in my lifetime, there's never been a more exciting time to to, to fight for the kingdom and to be focused on the things that actually matter. Man, buddy, such a good word. And so, yeah. so for this moment, you know, in yeah. my own life, just listening to you, uh, just share that. Uh, so challenging and affirming. Um, and just like you said, just putting our eyes on Jesus and quit looking at the wind, you know, and look at Jesus. Quit, quit looking at the circumstances and just get yeah. sunburned by just, your your eyes fixed on the author and the maker of our faith. So good. Can you pray for us? Can you just pray for what's yeah, happening? Not just our Liberty students who are watching and all these other folks that are peeking in, but just pray for what's happening right now. Um, yeah. We'd love for you to yeah. just close us out. Good. Father, we just join the worship that is going on in heaven right now. You are on your throne. And everyone is just staring at you, worshiping you, as always, Lord. And we just join them, Lord, here on earth. May it be on earth as it is in heaven where we just worship you. We don't wake up thinking about ourselves, but we adore you and we thank you, Lord. May this be a time of thanksgiving. Thank you that we know you and that our salvation is secure because of Jesus. I thank you for the unity that's taking place in your body right now as there's just so much division and fighting that you hate. I thank you that you're even using this to humble people. God, I, I pray now for the hearts of everyone listening that they would draw so close to you. Lord, you're a God of relationship. You created us to know you. Yeah and to enjoy you deeply. And God, for you to be our first love and for us to be people of peace, Lord, even when you left the earth, Jesus, you said, peace, I leave you. My peace, I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. God, you, you said that in your father's house are many rooms and if it were not so, you would have told us. And you went there, prepare a place for us. And if you go and prepare a place, you will come back and you will take us to be with you where, where you are. And God, may we cling to these promises like never before as some of our loved ones are on the brink of seeing you because of all of this, Lord. Give them peace at this moment. Give them peace like never before. Yes. And God, make us courageous now to go out and love those who need your love, who need to know you, Lord, because our eternity is set, and this life on earth is short no matter how we slice it. So, Father, thank you. Thank you. We worship you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. So thankful for Pastor Francis Chan and his entire family as they're devoting their life to gospel work in Hong Kong. We wanted to spend the last few minutes that we have together worshiping with the Worship Collective uh, through a song that has meant so much to us in this particular season in the life of Liberty University. The first time that this really became an anthem for us was when we gathered together about six months ago for an impromptu worship sunset service that we held at Snowflex. 
about 5,000 of us got together last minute and we began to just worship God as we prayed over our campus, asking God for revival. And I'll never forget being in the middle of that crowd and saying to God, God, I want to look to you because you are where my help comes from. I'm asking you for a vision just in my life and then through my life in the way that we're going to do mission and ministry on campus this semester. But looking ahead, we can see how God has been faithful in, in not only answering that prayer throughout the semester, but even now as we're in this pandemic season together. So more than ever, we need to say these words to God. We need to say, God, in the middle of all these waves and wind and storm of life, uh, we want to make sure that we don't get our eyes off of you. God, we look to you. God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do.
Thanks again for joining us this morning and I uh, want to invite you to be a part of Friday's convocation. Our guest will be none other than Pastor John Mark Comer from Bridgetown, Portland. John uh, recently wrote a best-selling book called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. And so many of the themes in his book happen to be so timely for us as the world is getting quarantined and being forced to slow down and stop being in such a hurry. And so uh, I can't wait for us to sit down and have that conversation with him. Tonight at 6.30 Eastern Time, we'll be using different social media outlets, including Instagram Live, my own personal and a few others, uh, to just really open our home, Jennifer and I, uh, to have a uh, Q&A format, uh, Bible study slash conversation about all that's happening. Uh, that will be um, our time together from about 6.30 to 7.30. And then our Shepherds Department has opened up uh, different avenues for you to be able to, through uh, Zoom, Zoom and, uh, you know, just different outlets uh, have uh, community groups together as well. See you then.